Huh? Huh? I got a bandana. I'm one of the cool kids now, right? I'm so black. Anyway, <laughs> for those of you who have never seen my videos, I'm, yeah. Anyway, you, you, you'll understand in like two seconds. So today we're going to talk about the dream world and the spiritual world. And I'm going to lay at your feet this statement. Religious, religion is leading us astray. Scientists have said that there are alternative dimensions and probably infinite alternative dimensions. We know four dimensions right now, right? That we can perceive, but they're saying that there's more dimensions. And, and the reason we don't perceive these other dimensions is because we don't have the capability to perceive the other dimensions. What, what do we need, mean by this? Let me be very basic with this. So touch, you can touch things. That's a physical dimension, right? You can touch things. You can, you can feel things. You can touch things. You can smell things. You can perceive smell. You have sight. You can see things. You can perceive objects and sight and see things, right? You can hear things. You can perceive things through sound and pick up sound waves. So what they're saying is there's other dimensions and we have been cut off from them. And I say religion has cut off, cut us off from that. Religion, our current religions have destroyed all of the ancient religions, said that they were pagan. They were wrong. Oh, oh, oh how can you worship rocks? Oh, you're a pagan. Oh, that's terrible. How can you worship trees? But now we worship. No, we worship trees anyway. I mean, we call it being green or whatever. And we're discovering stuff that the religions of old, the ancient religions, already taught you. <laughs> old trees scrub the atmosphere of the... Oh, really? Uh, you know, if you had picked up that Native American religion, that African religion, you would already have known that. How's that for... I'm going to leave the end of this video with a dream sequence and I want you to interpret it. I think I know what it is, but I want you to interpret it. Understand in this dream that I have not seen anything going on in my life in this dream. So I want you to put you on your dream cap, your dream interpretation cap, and then do that for me. The next thing, scientists say, when you walk through a doorway, Walking through the doorway wipes your memory. And it is only the person with a very strong recollection who's able to carry on seamlessly. They restore their memory on the other side of the doorway. And so it has nothing to do with being young. Young people, their memory is wiped also when they walk through a doorway. Everybody. All humans. Tell me there's nothing spiritual about that. Tell me there's nothing going on. We are creating something and we just don't know it. We just think it's a doorway. We're just thinking that we're separating two spaces from each other or that we're securing one space from the other space. That's what we think that we're doing. But we might be creating something. Otherwise, why would your memory be wiped? You can go look this up. Your memory is wiped when you walk through a doorway. And when you get halfway through a room, then you say, why am I here? How's that possible? That would seem to be physically impossible that you forget from one room to the next room. And it has nothing to do with age. It happens to everybody. Every single human. There has to be some extra dimensional, some sort of spiritual thing. And, and if you read a lot of the mythology about things that we do in this physical realm that impacts the other realms, we just don't know it. It seems to smack of the spiritual. And this is why I say religions today have, have really done a job on us, has really ruined humanity, has really ruined us as creatures of this world, of this universe. 
I know you want to say, oh, no, but God. No, I'm not talking God. Religion. Understand religion. I, I choose and pick every word that comes out of my mouth precisely. I am very precise in my language. Religion has destroyed mankind. Destroyed. It's a done deal. It's already a done deal. In fact, you would have to completely destroy all of the religious connections and the powers that be in order for you to save humanity. And I guarantee you, if we go off into space and colonize another planet in some distant star, we're going to carry this insanity with us. Oh, and on the third day he did the, and this is what happens here. And Oh no, that was back on earth. No, we're applying it here too. Why? He wasn't here. Wasn't even part of it. But, but, but it's a part of our religion. That doesn't apply here. You're on Xenon 12. None of those people existed here. We're the first humans to ever colonize this planet. But it's a part of, how can you deny God? I'm not denying God. I'm denying your stupid religion that belongs specifically on earth. How about that one? Your religion, remember I said I'm not talking about God, I'm talking about religion. Your religion only applies to planet Earth. When we go out into outer space and start colonizing other planets, you can't bring your religion with you because it doesn't apply. It doesn't hold up. Your religion is here to limit you. Why is your mind white when you walk through a doorway? There has to be some sort of spiritual impact that you're not understanding. Let's get into the dream. I'm not going to tell you the whole dream. I'm just going to tell you a sequence. It's going to start out weird. And it's going to sound strange. I want you to interpret everything that I say. Everything that I'm about to say has a meaning. Every single detail, every word. I am driving down a street in a car, in a convertible. I am standing up in the car driving in the convertible. Don't ask me how I'm able to do this, but I am standing up in the car driving down the street. When I get down the street, I say, this is the wrong way. And I do a U-turn in the middle of the street. There are no other cars around. The main street is far in the distance that I came from. When I do a U-turn, a bunch of cholo gangsters come out to kill me. And they start running, chasing the car. I am standing up in the car, driving the car. I look sideways and they are running, keeping up with the car. First one guy keeps up and he says, I'm going to kill you. He doesn't actually say it, but I know he's thinking it. He can't keep up with the car, so he falls back. Another, the first one was fat. The, the second one is a skinny cholo. He keeps up with the car and he's going to kill me. Now I go back to a place, to a church where I was before this sequence happened. Now this church is in an upstairs commercial section. The church is out. It doesn't look like a church at all. It's just, it's a commercial building. It's, you know, just like a square box floor with chairs placed into this big room. Everybody in the church is black and they are young and they're reading, joking. Some are like doing some sort of homework, but it's not schoolwork. And I come into the church and a lot of times I'm invisible in my dream. I walk around invisible in my dreams, but it's not a case of invisibility. It's just a case of being ignored. Understand my words. So you have to interpret all of that. So I come in and I say, there's some gang members and they're trying to kill me. The gang members follow me all the way to this place. They come upstairs, a guy jumps out in front, 
to save me. And then I snatch the cholo from away from him and throw him down the stairs. And this happens several times. I keep throwing the cholos down the stairs. That's the end of the sequence. That's what I want you to interpret. I have a pretty good idea what it means. A lot of people say, oh, you just w- interpreting dreams is just something that went on during the day. I sit here all day in front of my computer programming. What have I don't, I haven't seen a cholo. I haven't been around a cholo. I haven't driven a car. I'm afraid to drive a car. I was in an accident some time ago and I'm afraid to get behind the wheel of a car. So I have a phobia about that. Uh, oh, I was in a suit. And I said, I, you have the wrong person. When I was driving down the street and did the U-turn and they were trying to catch me, I was in a suit driving in a nice car. And, and I said, you have the wrong guy. And they said, no, it's you. We're going to kill you. And I said, you have the wrong guy. Interpret that. Tell me what you think. Thank you for watching the Shigam Live Show.